Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibe for all you. Yes, I. And, uh, you know, before I go anywhere, let me say this, man. Thanks to everybody who subscribed. Thank you. Thanks to the people who comment all the time. And I get real Korean people from comments. Keep it coming. Suggest it. Suggest videos that you want me to react to. No, like I said before, in videos that do work. Uh, it's one of them jobs. So, you know, I'll get to it as, as fast as I can. But, you know, thank you all for all the, uh, the love I get and take. You know what I mean? It's cool to be getting to know people out there, you know? That's cool. But, we're going to do this here. No more mushy stuff. We're going to do this vibe here. This vibe here, uh, let me see, it's geography now. Papua New Guinea. I've always been tickled to learn about Papua New Guinea. You know what I mean? So let's see what my man here got to say about it, okay? Let's YouTube and Sim Sima. Do you believe dinosaurs exist? Well, if you want to try and find one, Papua New Guinea is probably your best bet. Really now? It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. Welcome to the land of secrets and mysteries. Much of Papua New Guinea still remains undiscovered and shrouded in colorful enigma. Everything from the people to the reported sightings of strange unknown creatures resembling dinosaurs, this place gets very fascinating very quick. And we will jump into it very quick, like right now, to the globe. <laughs> Papua New Guinea is like the bridge between Asia and the Pacific. Everything that moved east at some point usually passed through here. First of all, the country is located in Oceania, just about 100 miles or 160 kilometers above Australia's Cape York Peninsula. However, keep in mind these small islands just off the coast of Papua New Guinea actually belong to Australia as part of the Torres Strait Island chain, meaning that at its narrowest, Papua New Guinea is only about four kilometers away from Australia. It is part of the largest nation huh. in the oceanic subregion known as Melanesia. The island is on a larger island called New Guinea, shared by the Papua and West Papua regions of Indonesia, which make up the second largest island in the world after Greenland. The border is actually not a straight line, though. If you look closely, there is a slight indentation to the west at the Fly River. This was actually created in 1893 to allow better policing of the area by the British back when it was a colony. The country has somewhere over 600 islands, the largest one being called New Britain, which curves into New Ireland in the Bismarck Archipelago. The country huh. is divided into who 22 provinces, that area. the autonomous region of Bougainville, and the capital district for the capital, Port Moresby, located in the south. Port Moresby, of course, holds the largest international airport, Jackson's International, and they also have the largest shipping port as well. Otherwise, the second largest city, Lae, of course, holds the second busiest airport, Lae's Nazab Airport. Getting around in the country is a little difficult, and most people actually prefer to fly regionally rather than taking a road. The reason being because many roads just don't exist. In the south, you have the Hiritano Highway. In the center, you have the Highlands and Ramu Highways. And in the north, you have the Northern corridor. Roads also exist on the largest islands. However, much of the country, especially on the interior, is inaccessible and isolated from land transport. So to get to most of them, people fly to the many, many small airports and airstrips, about 80 of them altogether. Wow. Interesting fact, the Rabaul airport was actually destroyed by a volcanic eruption. I mean, it was actually built at the foot of an active volcano, so I don't quite see how they could have missed it, but okay. In any case, if you were paying attention, we said that Papua New Guinea actually has an autonomous province, Bougainville. This place is interesting because it kind of wants to break away. For one, geographically, it's classified as the northernmost part of the Solomon Island chain, even though it's not part of the Solomon Islands as a country. Second, well, the real controversy started in the 70s. It was like, all right, you two, after decades of being trust territories, I'm giving you independence. Finally, I can't wait to start my own thing. Uh, no, like you two are the same thing. Wait, what? You're mine now. No, I'm not gonna do this. I'm I'm gonna make my own country. I'm gonna call it the Republic of the North Solomons. <laughs> Nobody's gonna recognize you guys. And then it was like, whoa, you have like a lot of gold and copper. Yes, I do. Hey, I want that gold and copper. And since you're my country, I guess uh, I can do that. But it's going to ruin my environment and you aren't going to share the wealth. 
eventually the war ended after 10 years, which led to a peace agreement facilitated by New Zealand, which led to autonomy and the promise of a referendum for independence in October of 2019. So shortly after this video is uploaded, it could be outdated. Do you think like Bougainville will vote wow. for independence? Not my business to say, but recently New Caledonia voted to stick with France, so who knows, the Pacific Island region is shrouded with mystery. Like the notable sites to see if you decide to visit, such as the National Museum and Art Gallery, Rabaul, the volcano capital of the country, with the destroyed ruins, the Lai War Cemetery, the Parliament House, the JK McCarthy Museum, the Kokoda Track, and you can check out all of these festivals in various locations. Now those are all cool spots to check out, but the thing about Papua New Guinea is that the best thing to see is the unknown, the vast undiscovered interior that many people have not encroached upon. And it gets pretty in- So you know, that would be my trip right there. On what kind of animals up in that jungle there, but you know, look at that. Just pure green and trees, man. Nature is such a peaceful thing, looking thing until some creature come out, but usually creatures don't come out, so it's peaceful. Intense. Like, what on earth is this? <coughs> or this? Or this? Find out in the next segment. The. Those are all birds, the black bird of paradise, the western parotia, and the black sicklebill. Yeah, they have crazy birds here. We'll explain it in a bit. But first, the land. Papua New Guinea sits right below the equator, which means on average they have a warm tropical climate situated between three seas, the Bismarck, the Solomon Sea, and the Coral Sea. These seas are beautiful, but hidden underneath is a complete tectonic mess. Papua New Guinea is part of the larger ring of fire and smash right at the convergence of the Pacific and Australasian plates. This creates an underlying network of fissures, trenches, and fault lines that make the country incredibly incredibly susceptible to earthquakes and volcanic activity. The country wow. has hundreds of volcanoes, 67 of which are listed as active today. New Britain alone hosting the most out of any other area of the country at 21. The most recent major eruption, however, occurred in 2018 on the island of Kaduvar. The Ramu Markham fault line cuts right through the north part of the country, and this in return is part of what makes the Bismarck mountain chain the largest and longest in the country. Here you can find the tallest peak, Mount Willem, which depending on which continent you place the country is the tallest peak of Oceania and is one of the few places where you can find snow on a peak close to the equator. From these mountains flow the two longest rivers, the Sepik in the north and the Fly River, which makes that weird border thing. Next to the Fly River is the largest lake, Lake Murray, which is basically an engorged tree-shaped estuary that locals have claimed has some kind of dinosaur-looking creature living by it, which is undocumented or proven. The country is about 70%. It's, it's funny how, you know, it's called Papua New Guinea. And then all, all these, a bunch of names in there are English names. Stuff named, with, you named after people with English names. It's kind of like the opposite in my country. You have uh, British names of the parishes and stuff like that. And a lot of little places are French names because of the colonization of the place. But this year it's like a mixture of English and uh, whatever language i guess or dialects is spoken on the island there it's crazy forested and most of it is heavily concentrated in the west near the border in addition to the forests of the indonesian side this makes the new guinea rainforest the third largest in the world after the amazon and the congo generally the country is divided into four geographic regions the highlands the islands the momase and the southern region basically the highlands are the mountains they have a cooler climate with higher elevations the momase have lush fertile valleys where much of the agriculture is done the southern areas are flat humid and marshy and the islands are tropical and islandy yeah Quite an interesting setup, right, Bob Saget? Yes, it is. Not only is Papua heavily forested, but they have some of the most unique animal species known to man. You said they have dinosaurs, right? Okay, okay, it's kind of like a hook to maintain audience retention. I'm not the only YouTuber that does it. Ah, so you're lying for views. I'm not lying. I'm just saying people have reported something that could or could not be true and needs more evidence. Isn't it your job to report facts? It's a fact that people have made reports, and it's your job to finish your last line in the dialogue that I wrote in this script. You, you did a good job. Good job, Ryan. Thanks. Anywho, like Australia, Papua New Guinea is riddled with marsupials and monotremes, like the tree kangaroo, the echidna, crash bandicoots, and the bronze quoll. If Papua New Guinea was highlighted by an animal type, though, it would have to be birds, and specifically the birds of paradise. And what are birds? of paradise well this is usually the part where i take my triple shot espresso break and then noah comes in but noah's not here he's visiting his family in iowa for vacation so instead i got the next best thing the guy who introduced me to noah at his wedding caleb i quit my job so i could film the geography in hargesa yes you did i kind of ruined your life a little bit if anyone needs an amazing cinematographer hire caleb until then this can be your side gig and by the way we shot this out of sequence so your shirt is about to change in three 
Two. Over 40 species of the lavish, extremely colorful bird of paradise species are known to exist, and all have been documented here. Known for their aesthetic dimorphism, in which males display extreme plumage, tails, tufts, and wattles, usually used in an array like a of alien-like mating rituals. The nation is rich in minerals, and mineral extraction as well as a small petroleum industry makes up about a quarter of their GDP. Resource-wise, about 85% of the population lives off some kind of semi-subsistence farming and forestry, which makes up about another quarter of their GDP. Common staples include crops like taro, sweet potatoes, yams, and national favorite sago, which is the spongy center of various palm stems scraped out and made in various forms like paste, pancakes, and rolled starch balls. Which wow. brings us to food! As mentioned, most dishes will probably contain a staple root starch and meat, usually pork or fish, the two most common proteins. Some dishes that you guys, the Papua New Guinean geography peeps, suggested we mention include things like nangu, chicken pot, Sock sock dumplings, kava, and the national dish, mumu. All right, it was fun being Noah for a day, but now I have to go back to being the camera guy. Uh, what do I do now to say something about demographics? Just stand there for like two seconds, don't move. Why? Oh, we forgot to do a cheesy special effect. Thank you, Caleb. Now back into the box. <laughs> Now, one thing you have to understand is that only about 20% of the nation is urban. Many have never even contacted outsiders or seen a non-Papuan person. Breaking up the people groups of Papua New Guinea is incredibly difficult because most sources don't give specific percentages. I literally had to go to a website called The Joshua Project that listed the individual ethnic groups with estimated population numbers, and I had to do the math myself on this one. So if my calculations are correct, the country has a little under 9 million people and is the most linguistically diverse nation with over 850 languages oh, and see? ethnic groups. The wow. vast majority of the country, at somewhere around 97%, are classified under the broader Papuan Melanesian Islander ethnic group. And within this 97%, the largest groups are detribalized peoples, mostly urban dwellers that have either distanced themselves from traditional tribal labels or have mixed tribal heritage at around 12.2%. Otherwise, the Enga and Dakali are the largest group at about 3.4%, the Melpa at about 2.5%, the various Chimbu peoples together make up about 2.3%, and the Huli make up about 2.1%. The remaining the remainder of the Papuan Melanesians are a myriad of nearly 850 ethno-linguistic people groups and clans ranging from less than 100 members to over 100,000 each. After wow. that, non-Melanesian islanders like Micronesians and Polynesians make up about another 2%, whereas others like whites and Asians finish it off at about 1%. They use the Kina as their currency, which was actually named after the Kina shell, which they literally used as a national currency in the 1930s. They use the type I plug outlet and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, as mentioned, the majority of people in Papua New Guinea, although culturally diverse, fall under the broader general Melanesian classification in terms of ethnicity. Melanesians are a vibrant islander people group known for their distinct customs and even physical features. Many of them, for example, some of the people in the Tolai tribe, actually carry the TYRP1 gene that gives them natural blonde hair. This makes Melanesians the only people group outside of European heritage that grow natural blonde hair. Essentially, these Melanesian people played an important role as like the originators of everything islander in the Pacific. Most Micronesians, Polynesians, Indonesians and general Austronesians all have some kind of connection to the island of New Guinea, whether it's through ancestry or passing through. It was the launch pad that kind of kicked everything off. In any case, Papua New Guinea in itself has so many people groups that don't even speak the same language. So how they like communicating stuff. Great question, Keith. The country has three official languages, English, Tokpisin, and Hirimotu. The one that most people use is Tokpisin, derived from the words talk and pidgin, as it is an English Creole language. It's really interesting because if you're an English speaker, just reading or hearing it, you might kind of pick it up. Actually, you know what? Here are some of you guys, the Papuan geography is explaining. Hi, my name is Kitty. Tokpisin is an English-based Creole. Uh, if I would say, um, hey, bata, you go away. So you can hear the some of the English words. Yeah. Uh, for example, I said bata, which is a short form of brata, brother, meaning brother or dude. And you, same as the you in English, and go, and where, where. Uh, one phrase that I know is mino save, meaning I don't know. One in name belong you, meaning what's your name. Sounds similar to English. Yeah. But it's not really English at all. Thank you. Now, for culture, keeping it old school is definitely uh, kind of like New Guinea. You might even see people wearing like traditional. That's kind of like old Jamaican uh, patois, you know. It's English, but uh, it's kind of like this. It's a different type of English. It's cool. I wonder how many countries will be speaking English in about a hundred years' time.
grass skirts and stuff at the airport because there are over 800 ethno-linguistic people groups in Papua New Guinea it would take way too long to talk about all of them but some generally well-known tribes and traditions can be highlighted which will be explained by random Hannah <laughs> Let's Without go, Hannah. Doubt, Papua New Guinea can be considered one of the most colorfully traditional nations on Earth. And since there are so many tribes, I think that I need some help. Let's bring in... Ian! The Huli tribe of the Highlands is probably the most well-known tourist interacting tribe. They are used to foreigners visiting them as they put on their colorful body paint and headdresses. The Asaro tribe in the Eastern Highlands is also very interactive with tourists, known for having the Mud Men War Dance that uses ashen body paint and sculpted monster masks traditionally used to this scare is cool. pets. The Korowai and Kambai tribes are known for living in tree houses, sometimes as high as 140 feet or 43 meters. The Bai people are famous for their fire dance, jumping over flames and walking on coals while wearing huge bird imitating masks and flammable grass skirts to the beat of kundu drums. The Beel Beel people are known for making very elaborate red clay pots. And the women of the Oro tribe are known to have maze-like face tattoos. The Abalam tribe have wide circular shaped masks resembling owls and yams. Many tribes like the Anga practice a form of mummification on their dead, done through a smoke curing process and then the bodies are left outside on display for the village. Remember the Toraja people from the Indonesia episode? Yeah, it's like that, even though they're like 1500 miles away. The people of the Trobriand Islands have created their own version of cricket that fuses a performance known as the octopus dance. The men people groups have a very interesting caste system Man, based I've on got to go check that this parallels out. to the Vedic system in ancient Hinduism. Some Bougainville Islanders use bamboo pan flutes and wear huge bulbous headdresses as depicted on their flag. Ian, you are no longer needed. Thank you so much for your help. Get back in your box. <laughs> Woo, and after all that, that's not even scratching the surface. For what it's worth though, it is said that three things mainly unite the Papua New Guineans. God, rugby, and Tokpisin. I'm gonna put Ian down now. The dominant religion most claimed to adhere to in Papua New Guinea, at somewhere around 95%, is Christianity. Traditionally, many of the people groups came from a background of amnes and Papuan ritualist beliefs that range from tribe to tribe. Otherwise, almost all Papua New Guineans can agree they love rugby. Their national team, the Kumuls, is cheered on by everyone in every province from every tribe. They sing, they chant, and scream. Speaking of which, that brings us to Keith's stupid, Music segment. For the longest time, Papua New Guinea's traditional music genres were wildly unheard of. Only recently, in the early 1990s, did this dude, that guy, record and release an album highlighting tribal chants. One instrument that is quite universal and intertribal throughout much of the country is the Kundun drum. It is used at a variety of performances, celebrations, and rituals. Over time, much outside influence made its way into Papua New Guinea eventually. Soldiers in World War II introduced the ukulele and the guitar in the 1960s rock camp in in the 70s like you had some reggae and that's pretty much all i got that's right thank you keith finally papua new guinea was kind of tossed around a lot throughout its history it was kind of like mine northern part mine southern part mine no, northern part mine. mine yours to manage but ultimately still mine all of mine australia's northern part mine no oh my <laughs> oh, wow no, everybody just shut up i'm free can I leave you? No, you're mine. And that's basically the history of the nation. I mean, if you don't include the first wave of migrants from the Sunda and Sahul areas from 50,000 years ago and the second wave 2,500 years ago, I guess that means all we have to do now is uh, mention the famous people. Some notable people from Papua New Guinea or born in Papua New Guinea or of Papua New Guinean descent that you guys, the Papua New Guinean geography people suggested we mention include people like Michael Somare, these rugby players, Amy and George Shepard, Sir Kiki Jeno, Dika Tua, Toya Wiesel, George Talek, William Takaku, Sir Makeri Moralta and Archie Thompson. So yeah, Papua New Guinea has a lot of backstory, a lot of lush flora and fauna, a lot of different ethno-linguistic people groups, and as we will find out, a lot of diplomatic interaction. Moving on. <laughs> As mentioned, Papua New Guinea is kind of like the hub and link between Asia and Oceania. And things get interesting when you connect the dots. For one, as a commonwealth country, they have always had ties to other former British colonial states in the area. For example, New Zealand helped facilitate the drama in the past, and many Papua New Guinean locals move and work in New Zealand. Japan actually did quite a bit of development in World War II, especially in the Sepik area, and today they help fund schools and infrastructure. Many tourists come in and see the sites of their fallen ancestors. The first prime minister actually spoke Japanese as well. 
China has a love-hate relationship. Chinese merchants have been working on the island since before European colonialism. Although a sizable portion of modern business is done with the Chinese, locals have expressed concern over the escalating power struggle and have even rioted against Chinese-owned businesses. Nonetheless, China is still a key player in their diplomacy. In terms of their best friends, however, most Papua New Guineans would probably say culturally all the other Melanesian nations, most especially the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu though. They speak similar pidgin languages, many people travel and marry people from these countries, they are also co-founders of the Melanesian Spearhead Group, and together these three nations get each other the most. Australia, on the other hand, is the closest in terms of pretty much everything else. As a former dependent territory, they've kept close even after independence, they are the biggest trading partner, investor, aid provider, the English they are taught even follows the Australian accent. The native Aborigine population are technically cousins of Papuans, and even though there was a brief halt with tension over the 2006 Julian Moti affair, they've moved on and enjoy a pint nonetheless over a rugby match. In conclusion, Papua New Guinea is a place of color, contrast, origin, yeah, lots of mystery. color. When you come here, you have the clues. But That's a definitely colorful country there with all the different tribes who have all the different uh, traditions and stuff. Man, you could go through history of an area by just driving through that place. Because you know those people came from somewhere else with all the traffic and stuff going, all the trading and all of that there. But man, that is so cool. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this video. Go check it out. You know, without me babbling and screaming over stuff. But, uh, you know, do that. Go check it out. But, but you know, you got to keep watching my stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, just click on the little bubble that comes up there here shortly. Go check out the playlist and them. Keep watching. Get some popcorn. Oh, I got some new stuff called macadamia almonds. I'm going to have to try those. <laughs> Just remember those anyway, man. Hope you guys take care of each other out there, man. So take care of each other. We all we have. You know what I mean? Dogs and cats are nice, but if you fall sick, your dog is not going to drive you to the hospital. So appreciate the human beings that are around you. Know, some people appreciate their pets more than they appreciate the people in the house. Come on now. But anyway, man, take care of each other. Cool runnings, all right?